Okay, I'm just gonna... Well, I'm a bit late, but I'm just gonna play for the rest of this tournament. So I think uh, this guy's gonna win. He, uh, he's leading by quite a bit, and of course he's 2150, so... But um, yeah, I don't really mind winning, I'm just sort of playing a couple games. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, someone uh, recommended in my comment section that I should do more sort of commentary against lower rated people and just telling them what they do wrong. So, um, yeah, that's sort of what I'm trying to do right now. The, yeah, this guy is uh, 1900, so knight f3, e3. Yeah, bishop b5 is not a good move. Um, the best move is knight d4, and I usually play bishop b4, but there are other moves, like after knight d4, black can play c6. And, yeah, well, of course, white is just better or winning in those positions. So here, bishop a4 is another not-so-good move. Usually, when your bishop is on d5, b5, you just leave it there and sort of take the initiative with quick attacking moves instead of retreating the bishop. So I'm actually just going to develop now and yeah so queen f3 is another not so good move because now I have bishop b4 with a tempo and then knight e4 comes in and he has to take it. Oh all right <laughs> yeah but if he had taken the knight there I would have had um a tactic actually with um I would have had this tactic queen h4 g3 and now actually queen h5 first and which forces f3 and then I have queen h3 which is a really common theme um you know black gets his queen in here king d1 queen g2 that's why I had to play this first to force f3 so I can come in here and yeah it's just mating <clears throat> so <clears throat> next guy I'm gonna play let's play e3 this uh grand weapon line I like this line so queen f6 is not good um, I don't, I think knight of four is the move. Um, yeah, so correct for black there is bishop, bishop b4. This is just not good for black. You just sort of play your queen around. But, I mean, I can just block all his threats and queen f5. I take this and his queen is gone. So here, I'm just winning. Um, quite comfortably. Let's play this and just <laughs> threaten the checkmate. Yeah, he's missed it. Yeah, so every time your opponent makes room for a screen to come out, you should always calculate at least if he has some kind of mate with the with the queen swing around. Oh, he just gave up. But yeah, usually black can play g6 or h5 to stop sort of the queen Infiltrating. <clears throat> so, um, this game is taking a long time. So it looks like I might have a shot at finishing top three, I think. Especially if I keep getting lower rated. Well, this guy berserk back. So, I mean, usually if you're 1400 and your opponent is 2400, I wouldn't exactly recommend to berserk back. But, I mean, of course, I like it when my opponent took back, but yeah, it's not really optimal if you're trying to win. 
as a lower rated. So once again, he plays this bishop b5 without a real idea behind it. He's just sort of a spite move. And um, and he goes to c4 and to b3. So this bishop maneuver here really isn't anything. It's just, well, it's just bad, really. I mean, I take a free pawn here. So usually in these positions with e4, e5, bishop c4 is pretty much always bad because black always has d5 against it. So I think I'm mating here because I get this, b5, queen b4, and queen d3, I can take this. But yeah, that was a bit, a bit more of an advanced idea. But, you know, every time you play d4 and your opponent's pawn is not on c7, you should always look out for these sort of queen a5 moves. And especially queen a5, b4, if, you know, your opponent's queen can go to any of these squares and sort of checkmate you on this diagonal. <clears throat> so it can be a bit hard to see sometimes, but, um, yeah, well. Okay, so, king d2, trying to run away. <clears throat> so I know my average opponent is 1200, which is, um, it's pretty low. Looks like, um, looks like I'm playing this guy. I drew in here, hmm. So, um, I'm <clears throat> not sure what opening he plays, but he has a pretty decent score, I think that's me. Is he gonna play e3? Yeah, he is. Um, let's play e6. Knight d4, I'm gonna play this c6. So this is one line. Um, so yeah, Fables told me about this line, actually. So we play this and then king f7. So idea is queen c7, bishop b4, c3, and I think queen f8. Or was it knight h6? I mean, I really didn't <laughs> look at this this line in uh, in much depth. I pretty much the only thing I looked up was this position, and I stopped my analysis here. I think I think knight h6 is the move. Or to play for a win because you can sort of have this idea and just shove the pawn up his up his face this I think is just terrible looks pretty bad I get my knight in so usually when um, when the bishop lands on b4 and there's a knight here almost all the time it's best to move the pawn since if you move your knight up, your opponent always has this sort of knight up here idea. Because of course you can't take since it's pinned. So right now, if you were to take this one and pull up my pieces, then I have this. And then I have a mate next move. Unstoppable. So probably the best is, oof, yeah, something like that evacuating his bishop yeah this i didn't see actually because now he threatens mate himself and actually if i go here he has queen f4 which would be pretty bad so i'm gonna play king f8 so now my idea is to just develop my knight simply But yeah, of course, I still have this idea in mind. So he's castled. Let me play this. So g4, f5. Yeah, so g4, f5 is always an idea in these sort of positions where black has a... Or when one side has a queen on d8. <clears throat> also, f5 now is, is, is a move. Although... It is a bit risky, and he can always just 
Oh no, he can't. Cause I have here, maybe. <clears throat> it's a bit tricky, but um, I can always just take this. So let's take that. But it's a bit risky, of course, since you can get some rooks in here. But as of now, I I can take this if he tries for anything. Oh, okay. So he's just he's just taking that, but that's not so dangerous. So I can play here. He plays g5, and then I can get this rook out. If he plays g5, I can sort of just evacuate my king. I do have to watch out for pawnetization, which is when your opponent puts all his squares so they don't match your bishop, and then leaves you with like only your bishop left. That's often a killer. Or not killer, more like drawer, but you know. Uh, oh wait, I'm not even... I thought it was up material actually. Maybe I just miscounted. Oh yeah, I thought he would take this one. Okay, that's that's unfortunate. I didn't I didn't even see that. Um Yeah, not <laughs> Yeah, I'm probably still better but not winning most definitely. And um White has some counterplay on the king side. Oh, Alright, so he just took my knight, and he's probably just going to pawn his eyes now for the draw. But I guess a draw against spam is... Oh, wait, but he played... I was about to say it's alright, but... Um, oh yeah, b3. Yeah, this looks like a draw, but... So I'm going to play rook c8, actually. Because I do have... If he takes this, I do, have, I do get the outside passer. Oh, he did. I think that's a mistake. So my goal now is just to trade off all the rooks. If he goes this way, then his king gets really far away from my two pawns. Um, yeah, but I think something like... No, but if rook d1... Yeah, so now I win, I think. Takes here. King f1. a4 takes here. King e1. B4, King here, 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 here. Yeah, I just win, I think. Because my king is a lot... Has a lot, you know, can block a lot higher up. So yeah, in pawning games, I mean, usually um, pawning games are draw if they're symmetrical. But in endings like this, where I have this pawn all the way up his face, um, I mean, my king can just block his pawns on uh, one of these rows, as long as my, as long as, you know, well actually, this is a pretty special example since his pawn is all the way up here, but usually, as long as I can block my opponent's pawn higher up, then, you know, my, then my pawn is, then he falls into Zugzwang. And he has to move, and then I can just screen. So one important maneuver in uh, in pawn end games is the triangulation. I think it's called. Um, so let's say if like the pa the pawns were on here, and it was my turn, I could play king e seven, and he has to push, and then I can play king f seven, and then it's my opponent's move. That's a really important sort of motif to keep in mind. So yeah, um. Actually, right now, it's okay for me to trade the pawns, since, yeah, right now it just doesn't matter. Because I can just block it any way I want. So I don't I don't really have to be accurate here, since my king is so far up. Um, yeah, he just resigned. But that game was pretty long, so now I win the tournament, unfortunately. But I guess I'll manage. So 8 minutes, that should be one game, I think. One or two, depends on my opponents. Let's see. 1300, yep. Should be one game. 
Let's see. I'm gonna try to play another three later. Oh, just oh. Um, yeah. Um, one thing is, if you're trying to improve, um, definitely don't do that because well, if you resign against the stronger players, you won't get sort of their you won't get the experience of playing against strong players. So you'll really struggle a lot, and of course you can't just uh, you can't just resign every game. I mean, I think it's actually gets to the leech's terms of service. So yeah, that's um that's that I guess. So yeah, I mean, of course, I recommend playing every single game against whomever. So he plays this line, which is, um, well, dubious for black. Um, so here white is just winning, especially if he does that. So this is one common sort of setup for black, but it just loses. There's white has forced mate here. Queen g4, queen h4, and queen h5. Yeah, I mean, I've had this a couple times, but, I mean, it's just mating. So, I mean, something like this or something. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's mating. So that was two pretty fast games. Oh, wow. Um, I might win, <laughs> actually. If I, um, if I win two more games, I might win the tournament. This is, um, that's pretty cool. <laughs> In 20 minutes. Well, usually I don't play the 5-0, um, hourlies. Usually I play the 1-0 hourly and um, well sometimes I play the 1-0 hourly uh, but yeah I occasionally I, I play the 2-0 because that's how that's like the optimal one for beating the world record which, well I'm currently holding the world record but I still want to beat it just I just want to beat my own record for fun um, yeah, so this opening just is everything but a good opening. So first of all, this g4 line is not that good. Um, better would be e3. Um, I think h3 is another move. Um, but yeah, g4. Especially, yeah, so this knight f5 expecting me to take it probably. But yeah, just knight takes g4 and black is just better. And yeah, of course, queen b4 is just hanging. 94. 94 is sometimes a move, but well, I mean, I guess white's down a queen, so it doesn't really matter what he plays. So I'm just gonna play a five, hoping he misses this, which he did. So yeah, king d1, and I can just do this pendulum maneuver. Oh, he. <laughs> so one more game, actually, and I am. And I'm leading the tournament. Well, it depends on if um, if this guy wins or not. Duality. Okay. J Peach. He's not online. Why do I keep getting these wins against? Oh, never mind. He played a move. Queen h5, knight f3, um, queen takes h7, seven, I think uh, bishop g7 is the move, yeah. So here there's this line with knight here, and I play d4. So h4, let's play this. I haven't looked at this at all actually, but I think black is fine here. Actually, I think black is better. At least in this specific line, um, but generally the the queen takes h7 lines aren't really that strong. I mean, you the basic idea is pretty primitive. You just take on h7 and you just shove the h pawn up their face. But usually, they're not that strong um, lines, and most of the times they're draws anyway. So, and they're pretty boring to play against. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really... Well, I'm actually pretty bad against that, as black. Uh, I, 
I lose a lot of um I lose a lot of games I shouldn't lose. Let's let's put it that way. So now you can you can um yeah, I mean you can take this, but I play a five and you just you have no pieces left on the king size. I think that was his idea, but he just didn't see f5. So I mean ID8 is a move, but it's I mean I just move my bishop and uh well knight g7 just king g8. So maybe e4, but oh yeah, actually e4 was stopping this. I was able to knight f7, but I play this now. Still looking for the f5 move, and he allows it now. Yeah, so I think e4 was better there, and I would have to we'll play this, but then he can actually take it. So, not sure about that one, actually. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, of course, I can play this. I didn't I didn't actually see that but I think that's just yeah I'm gonna play it now and I I think black just wins because I take all his pieces nothing left there we go he has a knight and a bishop but that's nowhere near enough to create any dangerous threats really it's just really just liquidating the queen there which, I mean, in Atomic, usually it's pretty easy to, to liquidate. <clears throat> yeah, I take this bishop, I take the pawn here. Even though I'm up a pawn and a bishop, I I usually would take those pawns to just prevent any hope of pawnetization. Even though I'm actually up a pawn, so it didn't really matter, but yeah. So it looks like we get this. Alright. Oh, we just gave up. Parents closed. Looks like I won the tournament, I think. Except, yeah, this guy's not playing. So, um, yeah, I hope you, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm not sure if I played that well, but I won all my games, so <laughs> I'll take that as a pretty nice, pretty nice tournament. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, especially for you know the lower rated players i sort of made this video as just a couple tips and tricks for the lower rated players so um yeah be sure to tell in the comments if you like this content and uh yeah i guess that's it